close enough. I have a little OCD. <laughs> <laughs> And now they're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. <laughs> As this is a new show, can you sort of just introduce like how you got involved and like? Have you seen the pilot? Yes. Okay, so we're speaking for your audience. Um, I had the script for three weeks. I refused to read it. Um, I'm so in love with the upcoming films, independence that I've worked on. I had a great time at Sundance. I didn't want to disrupt the good track record. Um, the film Blue Caprice, another film, independent film I've done, Blackbirds, another one that I'm doing to do with Jake Mahaffey called Free Indeed, it's The Under Shepherd with Russ Barr that did very well on TV One. These stories that are topical, that are challenging and pushing the envelope. So I'm like, I've already been on a TV show that pushed the envelope and changed television as we, as we knew it at that time. That was very diverse, very transformative. So can't get any better than that until I read the script. And my wife said, look, they all knew what my manager says, you ever push this? He says, please, I said, just read it. I'm like, no, nah, don't have to. You can't get better than what I've already done. It's just that it's impossible. Impossible. I was wrong. And uh, I told my manager that. I treated it. I was wrong. Um, I told my wife, I was wrong. This is Jason Rothenberg. I'm extremely excited about the potential of his vision. And I'm most... <laughs> I'm on this journey because I'm most interested to see, uh, yet again, how humanity, how the world responds to his voice. And if I'm right, then it would be bigger than anything I've ever done. So what was it in the script that particularly got to you, that sold you on it? Was there one the thing soul. you can point to? Okay. The soul. You know, there's a many talks where I get esoteric of different visions. You have the spiritual, the soul, and the character. Ironically, I'm playing a character. It comes from his soul. Mm. Chancellor Jaha. Or Chancellor Thelonious Jaha. You tell me his name is Thelonious. So, you, you, you have to understand how difficult it is to write. First, turn white paper, letters, and then give it up, give birth to it, and then give birth to it again, hiring someone who you think can convey your ideas. So, you know, in all of my work and all of my commitments, people go, oh, I loved you in this, I hated you in that, oh, I, I was confused in both. I didn't write it. People forget, it's like, I didn't write it. <laughs> I don't think I'm really personally that interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's a lot. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> but um, I didn't write it. So if I'm intrigued as a human being, as an artist, someone that loves good literature, good books, good films, want to be, my beliefs to be suspended. I love movies. Godfather, Dustin Hoffman, Robert De Niro. I love actors and great acting and Meryl Streep's and I want to be a part of that, that ilk. So when I'm intrigued with something, uh, then hopefully you're going to be intrigued by it. If I, if I, if I, if we call it nailing it, if I'm doing my job right. Um, because it's nothing worse than recession, still recession is still real, than me having you feel like you wasted your time. It doesn't, me as a business person, as an artist, my, my drive of wanting to excel to the highest standard of what I do is because I don't want you to come to me and ask for your money back at Whole Foods. <laughs> or go, you suck. I wasted 42 minutes of my life. So that, that's where my passion has always come from. Is I've always been terrified of not having credibility with you guys. It's that if you don't believe, like it or love the character, if you don't believe it, if you're not feeling it, I'm not doing the job that I was hired to do, and I'm certainly not serving the audience. And that's how I, Isaiah Washington, speaking of third person, that's how I operate, is that, you know, the audience is a voter. And in these times, with all the plethora of things that can grasp, get your attention, if you dare care enough about what I'm doing to sit down on that station and watch, 
least I can do is be good at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that's that's just how, you know, everybody doesn't operate that way, but that's how I operate. Is that uh, okay, I'm performing for that first team. Those teamsters, those guys, those grips, that director of photography, if they're crying or they're pissed off or they're walking away or they're upset or they're feeling it, then I know by the time it gets to you, it's, it's golden. We talked about what kind of leader the chancellor is. We only get to kind of see him make an epic entrance at the end of the pilot, really. So wow, what a glorious word. Epic? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was an epic entrance. Um, <laughs> kind of what Chill kind bumps of, and blushing. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of you know, leader do you, do you foresee him to be? <laughs> I'm purple right now, bro. You just can't see through this brown, but it's purple. <laughs> purple. I'm red as you right now. But go ahead. All, so what kind, of, what kind of leader do you think the chancellor is? That's a good question. Because hopefully if I get it right, like I told the last three tables, I have yet again a, a, an epic opportunity to transform a character on television as we know it. I didn't think I'd have another blessing like this. But my goal, if I get it right, I will. <laughs> Have that man at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue call the CW Network after watching a few episodes of this show and being hooked and say, God, man, I don't want to be you. I am so glad I am not that leader of On the Ark. That's just a tough job. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>